Welcome. You're tuned to the Urban Affairs Program. It's time to get up for Urban Perspectives with your host, Pete Rhodes. Welcome, you're watching Urban Perspectives. I'm your host, Pete Rhodes. On this edition of Urban Perspectives, we'll spotlight the Minneapolis sound and some of the artists that helped make the Twin Cities a hotbed for music worldwide. We're about to jam on this edition of Urban Perspectives. My first guest is the front man for F Deluxe and a member of the first family of Minnesota music, the Petersons. She's the former lead singer of Prince-inspired group, The Family, and keyboardist with the international R&B group, The Time, and also the program chair at the Minneapolis Media Institute. Please welcome Paul, AKA St. Paul Peterson. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. I well, appreciate it, Peter. I am so glad that you can be here with me as we uh, talk about the Minneapolis sound and its influences on music worldwide. Absolutely. And Paul, you hail from a very musical family, the Petersons. And with all your brothers and sisters, uh, yeah. I'm sure your home was just filled with music day by day. How did it help to influence your music and your style, your musical journey? Well, you, I'm the youngest of the, the whole clan, so it was the trickle-down theory for me. I basically got my training through osmosis. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really know any better. We all, uh, all my brothers and sisters would play, my mom, my dad would play, and so there was music in the house all the time, so I thought that every kid had that same environment. Obviously, <laughs> that's not the case, yeah. but uh, I was just so blessed to have an upbringing like that and encouraged to explore the arts. So, knowing all of the music that happened in the 80s and the 90s on the Minneapolis yeah. scene, uh, you were involved with some of those major groups as I spoke about in the top of the show there oh, with yeah. the time and family mm -hmm. and, uh, and others. Uh, how did you get in that mix? God, you know, it's, it's a funny story. I was uh, just graduated from high school. I was up on a small vacation with my dearest friend, Brett Ward, mm -hmm. and I uh, got a phone call from my brother-in-law, Stuart Pastor, that said, you better get your butt back to Richfield because <laughs> I have an audition scheduled for you with this group at the time. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Mm -hmm. So I hurried back into my vacation early and, and uh, you know, they delivered a cassette to mom's house. That's where I was at. And I had to learn, I would say about eight or nine songs the night before the rehearsal and I had to learn how to play them. And I was playing keyboards at that time. Right, right. So I had to learn how to play them, memorize them, make sure I could dance, which I really couldn't dance, <laughs> but you know, they worked with me. You made it happen. They worked with, they worked with me. <laughs> and uh, you know, memorize everything and be able to do everything by the next day. And it all worked out. Uh, uh, next thing I knew, I was in the time being, you know, replacing Jimmy or Monty, however you want to look at yeah, it. Yeah. And the journey began. It was an incredible, incredible experience. Yeah, well, you know, you did a fantastic job. I can remember you at the uh, prom center with us. Oh, uh, we man. Have pictures of that. Well, you, we have a long history yeah, together, don't we? Exactly. It looked we like do. you knew what you were doing. <laughs> well, I'm glad I fooled you. Maybe you fooled <laughs> a few other folks, too. Well, you came back with uh, this new group called F Deluxe. Yes. And um, with some of the old, all of the original members. You played at Carnegie Hall. You we also did. played at the uh, Minnesota Black Music Awards. Uh, Thank you for that. How did your old fans and your new fans uh, uh, take to the, to the new formation group? You know, it was, uh, it was an interesting journey because when we decided to get the family back together, that's really who it is. It's mm -hmm. a re right. resurgence of the old band, the family, with the exception of Jerome, okay. who did, uh, decided not to join us, but uh, we totally respect that. But when we... Uh, when we did a couple of concerts, one for Sheila E's uh, foundation, and then Questlove, who is a fan of the group, yeah. asked us to come and play his pre-Grammy party. We all looked at each other and said, you know, this is pretty fun. We better think about getting Putting back together. Back. So yeah. we did, and when I was touring with Kenny Loggins, I would stop and write uh, the bulk of this, the first record, our comeback record, with Susanna in California. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just had to get to know each other musically because we didn't write any of the first record. Uh, that was all Prince. Okay. So okay. we had to figure out who we were musically and we were, you know, 25 years uh, worth of salt and pepper, shall yeah, we say. Yeah. Okay. So we had to figure out who we were musically and how we would fit this thing together, yet keeping a, an idea of what the old band was but not relying 
so that. much on that. So it really was a discovery for us, and it was a, you know, it was a long process. I think it took us four, four and a half years to get that first record out. Wow. But well, fantastic job on it. And I really, I oh, really enjoyed you. it. Really enjoyed the performances. You got to, got to see it if you can. The, the other thing that you're doing out of the many things, <laughs> you're a program chair over at the Minneapolis Media Institute, yes. which is a, a great school in the Twin Cities for this industry. How has your experience helped the students? Oh, you know, I got to say that I never thought I'd see myself as an, an educator because it, it, I'm not formally trained. My family, as I said, basically trained me mm -hmm. and then I was blessed enough to have a, a fun career. But yeah, uh, getting into education has really changed my perspective on everything and being able to give back to the next generation of uh, producers and engineers and live sound people and post-production people and being able to share my experiences with them has been such an experience such a great great thing and you know it really making a difference in a young person's life that's a lot that's what it's all that's about great now real quickly here you have a new piece that you're doing and uh, we can see you around the twin cities what's the name of the group and who's in it oh lp music yeah lp music is uh, eric leeds a grammy award-winning uh, saxophonist who also was in the family and the new power generation actually yeah the new power yeah, generation yeah. but he and i are old friends and we play around town and it's it's basically um, a group that is an instrumental group and we uh, we do jazz and funk and it's Super. and we make it up as we go along and like we get it. to play with folks like Stokely Williams and Peter Shimke. That's and great. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Paul Peterson, I want to thank you for being here with me on this edition of uh, Urban Perspectives. Got to come back. I'm honored. Thank you so much for having me. Coming up, I'll talk one-on-one -on -one with the multi-Grammy Award winner and music director of one of the world's most inspiring groups here on Urban Perspectives. Perfect. Welcome back to Urban Perspectives. I'm truly optimistic having my next guest keeping our heads to the sky on our journey to Africa to America. Now these are three of the numerous song titles and lyrics written and arranged by this hometown music giant, who's like a brother to me actually. Please welcome the director of the Grammy Award winning Sounds of Blackness, Mr. Gary Hines. Gary, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. Yes. You know, uh, we were looking over the history, the historic history of the Sounds of Blackness, and you're uh, now celebrating over 45 years of, of music excellence. How do you think the Sounds of Blackness music has influenced not only the Minneapolis sound, but worldwide? Well, we've been blessed to uh, be a part of this concept uh, that is now a reality called the Global Village. Yeah. Uh, there are now groups in Asia, uh, in Africa, in South America, in Europe um, that basically are extended family members of Sounds of Blackness and have patterned themselves after us with uh, the music of the African American experience mm -hmm. for all people and with messages of inspiration. So when you look at, uh, when we first met, um, it was like in the early 80s. I know right. you were, uh, uh, your mother, uh, Mother Hines, was a, a, a facet, a part of our uh, awards program overall. Right. And how did she, uh, we know that she performed with the greats, uh, yes. the Duke Ellingtons and others. Mm -hmm. How did she uh, help to influence your style of music? Well, growing up in New York and growing up around all the music uh, of Doris Hines, uh, not only jazz, um, but all different styles of music, uh, and then of course when we moved to Minneapolis, um, it was a great influence uh, mm -hmm. on what Sounds of Blackness is and does, and so and it still is to this day. Mm -hmm. So you know the sounds. Uh, just recently, we saw them uh, at the uh, Caboose, uh, yes. playing for the Funky Town Family Reunion. Yeah, that was kind of to help uh, our friend Lance Alexander. But as well, I see in the faces of the uh, performers in the group mm -hmm. that that was an important piece. Why was it so important? Well, like you say, uh, Peter, it was important to help our brother Lance Alexander. We give him a love shout as well, and yeah. all of his uh, colleagues in Low Key, and all of our former label mates, and Men Condition, uh, and Next, and all. They were all there uh, to help out. Um, but it was also a reunion, like you say, of the Minneapolis sound. And so we're, as Sounds of Blackness, just so blessed and honored to be a part of that tradition. Yeah, so Lance did a lot, I gather, in the number of the songs that you talked about in terms of 
helping with drum programming and a lot yes. of other things. Yes, Lance was uh, an integral part of Sounds of Blackness Sound. Uh, Jam and Lewis would be the first to tell you that. Yeah. Also, uh, live performances, uh, when Sounds of Blackness did a, a tour of the HBCUs, the historically black colleges and universities, uh, low key, hit the road with us. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we have uh, live stage experience and studio experience and uh, nothing but love for uh, Lance and Low Key. Now, the sounds have played around the world representing Minneapolis and yeah. Minnesota on a lot of different occasions. Uh, I know a lot of us are watching soccer now. It's a big thing that's mm -hmm. happening in the world. Some of the things that you guys have played in, which has been the most inspiring for you? Probably our first uh, sojourn to Africa in uh, Ghana and mm -hmm. Accra and Cape Coast, um, because after years of singing about the motherland, to finally go there, um, even Richard Pryor said that everyone uh, of our descent should go. I think all people should go at least once in their lives, and that you'll never be the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've never been the same since. And um, you know, we just cherish that. You know, when you look at the uh, sounds of blackness and the um, kind of music that you put together, mm -hmm. what would you say the style of the Sounds of Blackness is overall for a for viewing audience? Well, the style is what the name says, Sounds of Blackness. Every sound of the black African-American experience, mm -hmm. uh, work songs, field hollers, ragtime, rock and roll, a lot of people forget rock and roll mm -hmm. is black music, mm -hmm. uh, blues, jazz, gospel, R&B, hip hop, of course. All of these are, are sounds from the culture and that the world acknowledges uh, and admires, really, and yeah. emulates. Exactly. Um, and so we say that um, this is the music of our culture. Uh, we share it with all people with messages of inspiration. Yeah. You know, you've worked with Prince, uh, Jamin Lewis, mm -hmm. two of the great producers uh, and uh, artists uh, in, in music today. Mm -hmm. How did their style influence you and how do you keep getting fresh with the sounds each year? Well, as you say, Pete, we've been blessed at Sounds of Blackness to, to work uh, with Jam and Lewis and with Prince, and the relationships go back to mm -hmm. like the 70s, before any of that happened for any of us, uh, playing the Northside Festival and playing yeah. the Miss Black Minnesota pageant. Uh, many times, um, the Flight Time Band, as it was still mm -hmm. called then, would uh, be the end act, and Sounds of Blackness would open up the show, would lift every voice, so we spent a lot of time backstage together, um, and the same with Prince, but in the studio, um, there was a lot of hands-on collaboration, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we treasure that. Jam and Lewis certainly um, nurtured uh, and, and guided us in the studio and, mm -hmm. and groomed us to, to be producers and writers. That's great. Now, any new projects that we can expect uh, uh, coming up from Sounds of Black and Sierra? Yes, sir. Uh, we want to let all your viewers know um, that Sounds of Blackness are coming out with our first live CD, The Sounds of Blackness Live, with special guests, ACWC, the Acapella College of Wiley, uh, Wiley College. Yes. And uh, we're looking to release that this fall. So uh, we want all your viewers to stay in touch with us at soundsofblackness.com and uh, on our Facebook page. Well, we are so glad and honored that uh, you, big brother, are here with me today to talk a little bit about the Sounds of Blackness and let everyone know how great you are and the group and how great you have been for our overall culture and this community that we stay in. So thank you so much for being here, Gary. Thank you, brother. It's all only by the grace of God and by the support of good people like you, my brother. Amen, amen. Yes, sir. Gary Hines, thank you so much. Now, for more information on the Lance Alexander Trust, which we support, you can visit the urbanperspectives.tv uh, for more information. Thanks again, Gary Hines. You're welcome, thank you. Weekly here on Urban Perspectives, we present shining stars, highlighting people, places, and events that contribute to the culture of the urban community. Our shining star this week is an up and coming artist on the music scene. Meet our shining star, Brandon Commodore. My name is Brandon Commodore. I'm a musician, a drummer, a producer, and a songwriter. For the last six years, I've been a touring drummer with uh, Mink Condition. Um, I recently started my own band called MPLS. I've also worked, performed and recorded with the Sounds of Blackness and other Twin Cities acts. MPLS is a band right here based in the Twin Cities. It's a young, um, fun, energetic band um, that, MPLS is a band where you can't quite figure out why you've heard it before, but you've never heard it before. It's like, we, we try to fuse what's happening, you know, in today's music with hip hop and R&B and neo soul with that Minneapolis sound that we've been talking about. So it's this marriage that happens between, you know, it's like bridging the gap between that Minneapolis funk of the 80s and then some of the popular stuff that's happening now.
My mother and father are uh, Ginger and Bobby Commodore. Well, my parents are both uh, original members in the Sounds of Blackness um, from way, way back, way back in the McAllister days. <clears throat> and so I was definitely exposed to a lot of gospel as a kid, um, a lot of gospel music. And then late 80s, they made their shift into a jazz ensemble. Um, and they were able to tour the world doing that. So that opened me up the most. When thinking about where I want to see myself in the next five years, uh, it's hard to say, only because right now I'm in this real vulnerable stage um, to where now people are, I'm gonna be judged on my writing and things like that now, which is a new, a new thing for me. This is my first, with the MPLS project, it's the first time people are gonna hear what my writing abilities are and things like that. So if I find out I'm good at it, um, then I plan to keep writing. I'm definitely going to keep producing. So the goal for the next five years is to establish myself, you know, off the drums as a, as a music producer and, um, and a songwriter and music business as well is a big, is a big interest of mine also. This is Brandon Commodore and you are now watching Urban Perspectives. Stevie Wonder says he's one of the best musicians in today's music. Find out what makes this artist number one on our charts here on Urban Perspectives. My next guest is a member of today's hottest live R&B band, one of the first groups signed by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis to Perspective Records, and they are the mainstay at the Essence Music Festival and multiple Minnesota Black Music Awards and Gold Record recipients. From the group Mint Condition, please welcome Stokely Williams. What's up, Stoke? How you doing, man? Glad Good to have you here with us. Good to be here, man. Thanks for having me. You know, um, it's a rarity in today's music to have live, real live performances uh, mm -hmm. by some of the bands. What makes uh, Mint Condition's performances so powerful and talked about? I think just connecting with the people. You know, we did that since day one, going out and just grassroots promotion. Um, we come from an era, you know, uh, looking at bands of the, you know, 70s and 80s who just they did the, the good work with the yeah. people. And I think just learning how to connect, you know, learning the science of the stage and, you know, just of the room. I think all these things really just connecting with the people over yeah. and over, you know, finding out what, what part of the country you're in. All these little, um, little things, just learning over and over, just, just trial and error. You find yeah. different, different parts of the country that you're in, how people react to your uh, performances? Yeah, it depends, you know. Um, it's, they like different things, and D.C. is a, a different vibe than the Midwest, yeah. than, you know, than out West, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really, it's cool, South is different a little bit, but they all come together for the same, you know, celebration of, of life and you know everything yeah. that we're talking about. So. You know your dad, uh, Professor Mahmoud El Khati, uh, an elder in our community and uh, one that provides us with knowledge and wisdom uh, ongoing. We love mm -hmm. him dearly. Uh, how did yes. he influence you personally and the group's overall uh, style? Oh my goodness! I mean, it's just, he's it's relentless with his. <laughs> you know, he can't help being a teacher. That's yeah. who he is. So I mean, since day one, I mean, I've always been right there, right next to him. You know, whether I be over over north with him at some meetings and you know. Just just by example, mm. you know, his big influence. I've always had uh, very strong male influences. He's always, you know, kind of placed me in areas where I could see. Mm -hmm. You know, because kids, they way more is uh, uh, caught than taught. Mm -hmm. You know, kids learn right, by right. through looking, you know, and you can teach them, but really just seeing it. So he was just an example. And, um, you know, that was the biggest influence, just, you know, not even just the music, but just how he lives his life, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah great. I, I, I heard uh, uh, that he had some bongos or congos around and uh, uh, when you first started, he heard yeah. you playing them. Uh, that was, that was yeah. a great story about how uh, he thought you had it going on even yeah, then. Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, but so young and, you know, I guess he was impressed with the rhythmic pattern that I was doing, it sounded like something like a grown up would should be doing. And they, you know, they were in bed, I guess, and like, what well, do you hear that? Yeah, that kind of yeah. thing. So, you know, and I uh, knew somebody at that point who was in a uh, African dance troupe. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up joining that, that group playing right out here in Minneapolis. It was yeah. my first gig when I was like four. Yeah, yeah. You know, amazing. You actually hail from St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, Saint Paul. People, uh, you know, Kuwait you with the, the Minneapolis sound, the Minnesota, capital of Minnesota, Minnesota right. that's no right. doubt. <laughs> uh, you met your friends and uh, other fellow group members over in that area. Y'all mm -hmm. went to the same school. St. Paul Central, yep. And we played behind a lot of different groups. Um, I was playing drums a lot. And, um, you know, every time we got together, the chemistry was right, you know. And um, 
it's, it just it just was right. I mean, we had a magnet arts school mm -hmm. in uh, over at St. Paul Central where they had steel drum class, they had recording arts. Yeah. So we all kind of came through there at different times. Lawrence is the oldest, and he came through there and just kind of like a stair step. Mm -hmm. And um, we just kept it moving, man. It just felt good every time we did it. Like we need to do our own thing. So you know, here we are. And that's when y'all came together for us, fortunately, right. on the, back right. in the uh, early 90s that's on the Minnesota Black Music Awards. Again. And I mean, you know, just captivated the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you've been involved with a lot of things here in the, in the Twin City area, but how has, you think, Mint Condition influenced the Minneapolis sound overall? Uh, first of all, thanks to you again, man. I always got <laughs> kudos to you, everything that you do around, around the cities for Appreciate everyone. It. Appreciate it. And, um, you know, how we influenced, uh, you know, I think just by example, you know, our drummer, uh, Brandon Commodore, has his own group, MPLS. Um, I think a direct influence, but also not only us, but everybody whom he's played with, The Sound of Blackness, incredible, you know, Gary Hines and these people uh, like that, you know, The Steels, you know, this great gospel family who's been here for years, mm. and so many others, you know, we always have, you know, we both play drums, so we all these, have all these little gigs that we do around town with these yeah. little groups, and, you know, all these things kind of influence each, each other mm -hmm. and um, I think just by example but it's being out in the uh, in the public eye for people to see you're on you're on display yeah. so you know, every time you, you're there you better hit it you, you know? better so, hit, hit it yeah, right that's yeah. right yeah. well you know I know you have uh, other uh, projects that you're doing that's mm -hmm. coming up uh, can you share some of them with us uh, yeah, we just uh, wrapped on this, uh, the, uh, doing a lot of production and writing right mm -hmm. now. You know, mm -hmm. this guy named Dwayne Woods, who's a gospel singer, um, uh, just rapped. I just did a song with this guy, it's a smooth jazz artist named uh, Tim Bowman. Mm -hmm. You'll be hearing up from him. Yeah. Um, Mint, what we're doing right now, we're trying to uh, showcase some of the uh, uh, lesser known catalog, uh, you know, uh, all the way from say 2004 to up to now. Yeah. You know, the stuff that, I'm, you know, the what kind of man, you know, the swinging and pretty brown eyes, but there's some stuff that a lot of people don't know right. that we've been doing the last 10 to 12 years. So well, We're looking you know, forward to seeing absolutely. it, man. No yeah. doubt about it. We'll keep you on our radar as everybody else in the country is doing and uh, appreciate what you do. Appreciate the group and appreciate your support ongoing. Thank also. you, man. Thank you for keep your support, man. Work. Stokely too. Williams. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you uh, now for watching Urban Perspectives. I really want to thank you and thank my guests, Paul Peterson, Gary Hines, Stokely Williams, and you, the audience, for getting up. And remember, there are great things going on in our cities, and you can find out about them right here on Urban Perspectives. I want you to enjoy the week's feature of Funky Town Family Reunion Photos. It's a benefit for Lance Alexander as well. I'm Pete Rhodes, and I'll see you next week.